we're gonna talk about Meek Mill and that album cover. Meek Mill and that album cover. <laughs> it's uh, been a whole lot of whole lot of talk, man. And I I thought about it this morning about talking about it, but since then it's just been so much, so much that's been said since this morning. So I'll play this little clip, man. This to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. That goes by in my neighborhood. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? What is this? This is on the side of a bus. This is on the side of a bus rolling through your street. Rolling on the side of your street. Is this what you want, black women? Is this what you want, black women? Is this what you want? Look at this bull fucking shit. Look at this shit on the side of a bus. Is this what you want, black women? Is this what you want? Is this how you want to be respected? Is this how you want to be respected in life? This is how you want to look. This is how you want to be portrayed. Stand up to this bullshit. I'm from Philly. I actually should support Meek Mill. This is fucking disgusting bullshit. Look at this lady. Look at this. This is on the side of a bus where little girls can pull up and see this shit. That's her fucking pussy. Let's not mistake him what this pink dot is. This is disgusting. This is satanic bullshit. I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of... Look at this shit that you're getting on. This is for everyone to see. Little girls are seeing this crap. It's fucking crap. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. Guess you guys get the point. This is the actual uh, cover right here. This is Meek Mill's album cover. And I've been seeing a lot of men and women that's offended by what they've seen. Um... I don't know what I thought about it. I mean, I just thought about my daughter, if I would want her seeing it, you know, that's the first thing that I thought about. But other than that, I wasn't too much pressing the issue. I mean, it's, it's so much other stuff that's going on right now that I think that people need to be making a big hype about, but they not, but they chose this. So let's talk about it. Let's we'll start with you, Relly. When you saw that album cover, what were your thoughts? Like, would well, you be offended? Well, so if I'm looking at the album cover, say if I'm I'm scrolling online, right, and I mm -hmm. come across a website and they posting the album cover, and it just that's just the album cover, then no, I don't have a problem with it. The gentleman in that particular video, I one thousand percent agree with. Number one, I'm wondering is that a city bus, right? And if so, who authorized that? Like that's absolutely not a good look. And then if it's just a regular tour bus, then that's a different conversation. Um, to have i remember being in um being in atlanta and uh i was at lennox mall i was working in lennox mall at the time and there's over the food court at that time it was like wide open and they had these big advertising that used to drop from the ceiling right and uh one of the advertisers I, I think it was for like zara or something like that but it was like this chick in this real skimpy bikini and them people were in the uproar because of you know the imagery i mean it was it was tastefully done it was just a woman in a bikini but it was real skimpy but the thing of it is is you have kids that come through there and you're subjecting them to that imagery in the name of you know marketing and advertising and so you know the artistic viewpoint of meek mills album cover i get you know you look at it and it kind of uh throws you in the mindset of um uh the kanye album my my beautiful twist my dark twisted fantasy yeah it, it throws you in that mindset um but to me it's not as artistic because even on remember now even on that album cover um and i think he had like three or four different variations of it but a lot of stuff he had blurred out on that album cover um so i don't have a problem with meek mills album cover per se i think it's in in step with his brand but for that particular video clip, man, I, I understand what dude's saying a hundred percent, man. That's 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 too much, bro. Honestly. Okay. What about you, Shan? What you think about it, man? It's a lot of people in the uproar about this, and particularly women. And I've seen some men surprisingly, I've seen a lot of men offended by it. Well, so I'm kind of split on the fence with it because here's the thing. 1994, I was in Africa uh, over in Somalia fighting the whole Black Hawk Down thing when Snoop Doggy Dog was introduced to the world. <laughs> and he had an album called Doggy Style. <laughs> and he had an album cover of a doghouse with a woman 
in the doghouse. Snoop was on was a dog portrayed as a dog sitting on top of that house, and she had her ass out. And that was a, supposed to be a controversial cover as well, like arguably more controversial than this one. And everybody kind of loved it, and everybody kind of hated it. It's hard to really argue that point because I'm wondering, like when I and, and looking at that dude's rage in the video that you just played, I'm wondering, man, that you know, I'll be thinking sometimes there'd be some agent provocateurs out there, like you know, like somebody's almost out there sending motherfuckers out there to do this shit to just to because they know social media and they know people are gonna watch that video and that video that particular video of a white guy going really upset and and and, and fighting almost kind of like splitting the uh the you know black people amongst each other somehow so i just a lot of times i'd be thinking a lot of there'd be agents being sent out like agent provocateurs to go out there and kind of like stir up shit in our communities but to be honest with you, the, the artistic side, I don't really see it. But but at the same time, that's what he raps about. If you look at the if you look at the bus, you see, I saw a yacht, I saw a black man with a gold chain, I saw money, I saw you know, I saw a lifeboat. I mean, a, a life raft, like to say that they're out in Miami. I saw some palm trees, you know. I saw all this stuff that they rap about. Then I saw the girls, and then if we gonna be mad, do we get mad like? I remember when a, a couple of weeks ago that that chick was they, that, that 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 white lady recorded those people dancing on that on that restaurant table twerking on that table, and everybody that got mad at that there was a whole group of women it was like no let them women do what they do let them be expressive let them so you got them dancing twerking popping their pussy on a on a family restaurant table black owned by the way, and people are supporting that. But then if Meek Mill goes out and puts the picture on his on his bus, all of a sudden we're supposed to be in an outrage. And I'm wondering, should it should the outrage start with us men? Should does it begin with us or does it begin with women policing women, making sure that these girls aren't out there doing that? But when they police them, are they selective when they do it? So if Meek Mill, a man, black man, goes out and portrays what black women are doing all over Instagram and certainly all over TikTok, who do we get mad at? Do we should we should we, you know, denounce and, and, and trounce and, and, and run the black guy up the hill with, you know, torches and pitchforks? Or do we start with the women who's being portrayed as such and also perpetuating that image, especially when it's supposed to be um, uh, sexual liberation? So I'm on the fence with it, man, because I don't think it's good for the girls to see that. I don't like that kind of stuff. Personally, I don't like. Um, are, are black women being out there portrayed as sex symbols and this is the best that we can do and then I'm upset with the brother that's on the bus you know because he's a brother with there he got his hair cut and he got a gold chain on and it's just like damn is this what we but you know if that's what's set from an artistic point I mean from an artist side from a business standpoint I understand it because you you give people what they want if you go all clean and wholesome how many albums is he gonna sell but if you start some shit up and you show people what they what they what they what they bounce and they ask for and all the strip clubs and everything that's going down from florida all the way through shit the bible belt well so let me ask let me ask you this shan um on the one point that you were making about being upset do you think that it is is the narrative that we should be upset at all or should those who disagree or take issue with that type of imagery being displayed in a public space should they also be allowed to voice their concern and push back yep no they should be yep. i believe that i believe because it's public right you know what i'm saying and see that's the thing so it's one so that and that's why i'm on the fence because in one on your what you're talking about really is like okay cool for those people that approve that type of imagery of our beautiful black women do that in private but when you got it on a bus on the highway Yard. and kids is getting picked up from school and they and they parked at a red light and the kids is looking at and seeing that on the bus what is that telling the young girls that oh you can do this and that's the part i have a problem with so adult content should be reserved for adult content but when you do stuff in the public man i kind of have an issue with that and so that's why i'm i'm like damn because i'm in the in, i'm out here in la and i understand you know, music industry. I understand the, the, the film industry and I understand how things can be and when it comes to marketing. But when you put it out there and you shoving it down people's throats in public on a bus for anybody to see children. 
I can imagine when my son's like, Dad, what's that? What's that girl right. doing? I gotta explain that, man. So it's it's really it's kind of fucked up. But well, this is the other crazy thing too. On and I apologize, Troll. I'll let you run run on run at it after this. But mm -hmm. you know, the other crazy thing about it is people talking more about the album cover than they talking about the content of the album. Meek Mill was in an uphill battle with this album. If I remember correct, he only sold like eighty thousand first week out, right? And I know there was a whole debate whether that was a a W or L in this climate but there was no there was no build up there was no anticipation leading into this album there was no um you know and you just expect a, per, a, a artist of that caliber to do numbers all the time but it seems like to me like that's one of those classic market employees right it's almost like um you know with the two live crew album that nasty as they want to be or even ice t power you know they talked about the album cover more than the content that was you know more than they talked about the music so you know i don't i don't know man yeah man, i think we just live in an era um to where polarizing is, is is best regardless like it's no such thing as bad uh publicity bad like, that, like that that video that we just seen with that outrage me me loving that I, I i would love that if i was him that's exactly what i was shooting for so this he made that album cover for it to be talked about and that's exactly what's happening so at that point it doesn't even really matter how good the music is people are gonna be like well damn what is this that everybody keeps talking about what's this outrage and people are gonna go buy it why because people gravitate to ignorance and that's just something that we as a people have to accept like you get just like uh i think shan said you could have a holy album cover if the album cover was was his grandma nobody would care if it was his baby nobody would care but you got naked women on there you got money getting thrown around and in my opinion don't get me wrong i feel like the album cover is terrible but i mean just from an aesthetic from an artist, just, yeah, from an artistic yeah, just, standpoint. Yeah, just just looking. just terrible. But I understand it from the polarizing standpoint because if you look at even the stuff that go viral on social media, it's always ignorance. It's back and forth, arguing, yeah. ignorance. Like that's the type of stuff that goes. We, you know, we, we all got platforms and podcasts and different things like that. If you put out a clip that's saying the right things in a holy way, it's gonna get a hundred views. But you put out some arguing back and forth with there's some ignorance involved, it, it'll do a million in a day. Yeah. So that that's the climate that we live in so as a as a creator it will behoove you to cater to that you know what i'm saying if that yeah. if your goal is to sell records your goal is to just get attention to what it is that you're doing um but as far as like the sensitivity of it um i i didn't i didn't really like see it and oh shit, that's crazy shocked by it because right, man, yeah. we are in a social media era to where these same kids that y'all talking about riding the riding the school bus looking over at that City mm -hmm. bus, them same kids got phones in their in their hands as they on their school bus. Yeah. They've been on social media all day. And I yeah. guarantee you that they done seen way worse on them phones that they holding than they seen on that bus with that album cover on. Yeah, that's, that's true. Real. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like we we in an era the world like it's murders, people getting shot in the head on social media. That's that's trending, people scrolling and seeing that, and we done got numb to it. Like yeah. uh, if, some, if we see somebody get shot on social media, it's just like, damn, man, that's crazy. Or we hear, hey, uh, fourteen students just got killed. It's, damn, that's crazy. All right, man, what, what we eating for lunch today? Like, is is that? <laughs> like, that, like yeah, that's it ain't gonna last. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It ain't gonna so, last, bro. Right, just like so, Snoop, so just like that. just like Snoop's album, it didn't last. Yeah, the the, uh, the doggy style out. The when that doggy style album cover came out, that was shock value. Right. I mean, it's almost like back in the day when when um uh, the movie, i remember i had it man that was that was, was the movie uh, uh uh gone with the wind remember in gone with the wind that was the, that 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 with the, those famous words of frankly my dear i don't give a damn he said that in that movie back in the day and that went across the world like oh my god he said damn you know <laughs> And you know, I love Lucy, where they got Ricky Ricardo and Lucy sleeping in separate beds because that was the law. That was a film law, and you had to have two people sleeping. And if they were in the same bed at the same time in the in the sixties and the seven, well, not the seventy, but in the sixties, if you were in the same bed on television, you had to have one foot on the ground. This mm. is what producers had this, us producers had to do. So if you had a woman and a man in the same bed, one man on the other end had to have his foot down, and the woman had to have her foot down on the other side of the bed. Now. You get more liberal. So when Snoop came out with that album, it was crazy. And people was like, what are you doing about this? This gangster rap and blah, blah, blah. But gangster rap was just budding and everybody was just kind of getting used to it. And that album went on to be the number one selling album in history of, you know, hip hop. Uh, mm -hmm. Meek Mill is doing the same thing. And how long are people going to be upset right now? How long are they going to be mad about that? It ain't like the album cover's changing. Nah, nah, about, a week, about a week, maybe two weeks. 
two, yeah. two days, two or three days. Well, that's that's how music <clears throat> consumption is, period, right now, though, right? Because I don't mm -hmm. know anybody that's still talking about Certified Lover Boy or Donda like that, right? And there was a whole bunch of antics leading up to that, right? So it's like in the music industry, what we see now is people making these Hail Mary plays just to get attention and, and, and trill to your point. To be honest, nobody's buying anything right. unless you like a super fan. That's why they charging like a hundred dollars for VIP tickets when the artists come in town. Like who, mm -hmm. who's paying a hundred dollars to go? You know what I'm saying? Some of these artists, you know, right. maybe Stevie Wonder or Sade, but my goodness. I mean, anyway, I, I think I think what, what has to happen is um because even everything that you just named, Shan, is like certified classic or has some historical reference. Mm -hmm. This just seems like a blatant market employee. And not only will we not be talking about the album cover in two weeks, we won't be talking about the music in two weeks. Yeah. I was on social media earlier and I seen it. They had like two buses that was back to back. I don't know what city it was in, but they had them wrapped. So I think this was some type of like marketing strategy. The only thing that I thought about, I'm not saying that I'm a fan of it, you know, being put out there, but it's like, it's a lot of other stuff being put out there. What about when these women had these rap videos and all the stuff that they mm -hmm. doing? It's, it's the same thing. So the same people that are saying that they don't like this, where was those same people when these other videos was coming out? When I mean, he's putting all this sex all on the screen and all these videos. And Well, see, the outrage is because it's a man doing it. And that was my point earlier. So if this was Cardi B dropping a WAP song and that was on a tour bus, it wouldn't be probably as much out. You know, this is the song is literally wet ass pussy, right? Mm -hmm. It's talking about everything. And if that and if they decided to do uh, a tour for that one song or say there was an album coming out that was right and that was going to be the first uh, single that dropped and the entire bus was wrapped around that and it was explaining wet ass pussy on the side of a bus, it would be all about empowerment. It would be about sexual liberation. It would be about the slut walk. Right. But because Meek is doing it, it's almost like, how dare you? But <laughs> I, I think, you know, remember, it's just a it's just a small select few who speak the loudest. I don't think that a whole lot of people is in the outrage. And that's why I spoke about the aging provocateur, because you get certain people who can make videos that's super passionate. You're walking around and beating on the bus and how dare you, blah, blah, blah. And that video go viral. But it ain't. But, a, you know, how many people is, is really feeling that way or really tripping? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't I even think. That. Yeah, I don't even think enough people even paid attention into the shade room and all these media outlets start to put it up there, but nobody was paying any no attention. Mm -hmm. So, I guess it is what it is.